All right, so today we're gonna go, we're gonna be kind of continuing from Wednesday. Today we're gonna focus a little bit more on some of the design wizard features. Also, we're gonna go through downloading certain file types. So um, being new, uh, there's some different types of files when you'll download them from the website. We have different files, whether it be like just individual designs where it might be, you know, SVG download. We have true type fonts where they'll come in like TTFs with sometimes different versions. Uh, and then we have our live templates, which are installed with like an application and those automatically drop into your live template editor folder and stuff like that. So we'll go through the different ones on that. We'll also um, cover some fonts going over the different sizing, um, RF versus SF, um, and just kind of everything that goes along with like the font preview, stuff like that. And then we'll get over into a little bit more of an overview of the live templates, going through the different file types and getting those cut ready. All right. So I know on the kind of, uh, the preview or the, the image might have said one to two, but we'll go a little bit past that. We'll probably at least go an hour and a half uh, for today's training just to get through all those things. And then next week we have the training series nine. That's going to kind of go back to the basics. So anyone that's new and stuff like that, that's going to kind of what we're doing the, the last couple of days. That's what we're going to be going, but greater detail next week. So if you're new or just kind of want to re refresh on our recap on you know the basics of Corel and the live or the design wizard that's what tra training series 9 is going to be perfect for <laughs> new or old or slow yeah <laughs> all right so we'll start with kind of just going through the different file types so what I did is I downloaded a couple different files earlier so let me see if I can pull that up real quick So let's see. So I try to do it this way so you can see exact, kind of get exactly what you'll see. Um, are you guys not able to see my screen? See, yes, I can. All right, so if for some reason you can't see the screen, just uh, log out and then log back in, and that usually fixes the problem. But it seems like everyone else, for the most part, can see it. So, um, for some reason, if you're having if you ever have trouble with the screen or audio, usually if you log in and log back out, that fixes the issue. All right, so. I logged in, I go to my account. So here's some of the purchases we've made or I've made. So I'm going to go to my orders and here's our first order right here. So here I just had a couple different downloads. So I'm going to hit view download. And these are a couple different types of fonts. So here, anytime we download fonts, there's a couple things we want to look into and we'll get into that a little bit after we go through the whole download process. But in this area here, for most of the fonts that you'll get, there'll be two different versions. There's going to be one that says like here, TRW 16 Western RF and TRW Western uh, or TRW 16 Western SF. So the only difference, they're the same font. The only thing that's different about these two are what we call like some actually already have a cut file around them so you have two choices with the fonts you can you know type out a single word create like a template box around that word or what you can do is cut out the entire alphabet with already like each letter being its own template and you can kind of line those up to spell out any word so like if you were doing a let's say like a pop-up stand or event stand somewhere, 
you could actually cut out all these pre-cut letters and then you could rearrange them to you know customize it on on site or anything like that so that's what the sf version is going to be those are going to be cut out ready to are already cut out kind of templates for each letter and then the rf version is just the single letter without any box around it and that's when you you know would just type out any word you wanted so on each one you'll see here same thing sf version and rf so i would recommend at for the fonts you're probably going to use that rf 85 90 percent of the time but you might want to cut out you know entire alphabet for a certain type of font um, so you can always download the sf2 it's not going to hurt anything so we're going to come here we're just going to hit download here download here and down here you'll see the two downloads the two file types here so at this point you can pretty much just click on that file it's going to show you a little pop-up window an example of the font and then up top here you're going to see the install button so you're just going to hit install and then same with the R or the SF so on the SF you can see how it has those boxes that I was talking about so each letter already has its own individual box around it so again we're just going to hit install And then once that grays out, we're pretty much good to go. All right, so those are our fonts there. Now, I'm pretty sure I already have this one installed, but we'll just kind of run through it too. Hit install. So I guess I didn't. And then we'll download this one here too. If you already have a font installed, if you get to this window again, it'll pretty much say this font's already installed. Do you want to, you know, add something new? So or override it anything like that so if you see that you can just pretty much exit out or you can install over it but you already have that font all right so those are our fonts very simple you just click on them hit install and the way fonts work are they're going to go into um pretty much every aspect of your computer. So you're installing this font to your computer now. So it's not like a special font that you'll only see in Corel Draw. Um, if you have other programs like the Silhouette, Cricut, anything like that, um, you know, actually something even like Microsoft Word, any, any place where you can drop a font list, those TRW fonts will actually be installed everywhere on your computer. So um, you only have to do that once and it goes goes throughout your entire computer all right so the next let's go back to my orders all right so the next one we have are a couple different other files so the fonts are pretty much like a one-time download once they're installed you're good to go now the, the some of the parts where we get the most questions or the most confusion is when it comes to mini packs and individual files so on here you'll see this wedding live template mini pack for the most part anything live template that's a mini pack or full pack will have what we call like an exe in installer so those file types so i'll go ahead and click view download so we can see all the downloads here so when i click onto this you'll see for the wedding live template mini pack you'll see it twice and if we look under the file type you'll see one says for Mac and one says for Windows so most of us that are using this software are gonna be PC users so Windows um, there are a few that will use like a separate program on their Apple um, to make it part piece to run half of it as like our part of your computer as a PC. So there's like boot camps or parallel programs that allow you to do that. Um, so with those versions, you can use the Mac file download here. And the only difference in these two files, you're still going to get everything, 
but the difference is for the Windows download, it's automatically gonna place these files in predetermined folders that we've told it to. So if it's your first time installing a live template mini pack, it will create those folders for you and then drop those these files in there for you. Otherwise, once you know, as you add more and more, it those files or folders already there created, and it'll just drop these in the right places. So we'll download the Mac version first, just so you can kind of see it. But once you do that, these are going to become these are going to come as zipped files. So the Mac version is just going to have everything separated for you. So you have your templates, your documents, the clip art associated, and the fonts and associated with this pack too. So this is a zip file. So what you're going to want to do is come up top here to extract all. Go ahead and click that. And this is just a folder that it's going to download to. So right now I have it downloading to my downloads. But if you wanted to, you know, drop that in your documents or any other folder. So this is where you can if you want to. Um, like let's say you don't. This is probably where you could actually create your own folder too. So if you went to documents here, you could right click just in an open area select new folder and here you can put you know trw live templates or downloads go ahead and click into that folder and then i can select folder and then hit extract so what that's going to do is unzip that file for me and drop all these folders or all these yeah all the folders you see there into my documents slash TRW live templates. So once what I should have actually done in here too is put new and I should have called this one wedding live template mini pack. And then I should have added the folders into there. All right, so now all those, because otherwise every time you do it, you'll get one that says templates, documents. Um, so here now we're actually in the wedding pack. So these are pretty much just the raw files. So if you go to your templates now, you'll see exactly what you would see through the other ones. So you'll have all your files there. Now the only difference of what you'll have to do if you don't, if you're using the Mac version, is this top one, you'll see the... Uh, folder font and here we've actually in are like dropped in all the fonts that we've used in this mini pack so have you guys ever opened up Corel and maybe someone sends you a file or it might be something you've downloaded from our site or somewhere else and it says like something like you don't have this exact font here's one that we've matched kind of close to it and it wants you to kind of switch to that font. Right? So yeah, that this kind of fixes that issue. So you will need to install all these fonts first. And you can do that by selecting all and installing. Right click install. Um, so you, you, but you'll just pretty much just like we did with the, um, the rhinestone fonts you can just click on one individually come up and hit install it'll probably say i already have this one installed but oh, i guess not um so you'll manually have to install all these fonts and that way when you open up these trw templates you'll notice all these different fonts that you'll see in here if you don't do that it's gonna pretty much say or try to switch out a font every time so if you like the way these are you know laid out and don't want those fonts to switch make sure you install those first All right. now that's only with the Mac version so most of us aren't ever gonna have to worry about this because when we get to our for Windows file everything's gonna automatically install for us so not only is it gonna drop these folders into the correct place already it's also going to install all those fonts as well. So you don't have to sit there and install one by one or anything like that. 
it's going to do all that for us. All right, so in this case, I'm going to hit download here. And now this time you'll see, instead of like a couple different folders laid out, you'll see t under type, it'll, it should say application. All right, so here you just have to double click. And it should open up a little screen like this. And you're just going to select next, next, install. Might take a minute or so. All right, and now I'm not sure if you can see this window that just popped up, but it will ask, uh, do you want to allow, it's going to say, do you want to allow this app to make changes? You'll say yes. And then it's just going to complete, and then we're just going to hit finished. All right, so at that point, now all those files have been added to our software. All right, but we still have to kind of set these folders and go find those folders because it's not, it's kind of in a hidden place. So we'll set, we'll show you how to set those folders next. All right. So we'll go through, before we go through those folders, we're going to go through the individual designs too, real quick and show you how we can set those up. Um, we had a question for some of the older pack, full packs. The clip art has not loaded into the right folder, and I can't find it when I put an item search. Should I re-download those packs? Yeah, that wouldn't hurt, um, Marcia. Too, if you if you send us an email with those um, those packs you're having issues, we can take a look at them too, just to make sure they're set up correctly, um, or we can hop on and see if we can find them for you. All right, so here we have our TRW Cleanstone 2. So that's just another rhinestone font. So we're going to, since we've already downloaded two, we'll skip that one. But next we have a couple different file types here. So any of the mini packs are going to install wherever we tell it to. Okay, now the individual designs, this is where sometimes we see, you know, we get a lot of questions too of like once I download them, where do they go? Do I have to keep downloading every time I want to use this and so on? So if you just download this file and never move it anywhere, it's going to be in your download folder. But over time, that's going to get lost and it's going to be really hard to go back and try to find that. So anytime you're, you purchase these like individual downloads, even though you, you know you don't have to order or download them right away but if you ever want to use them you know you will have to download them and then we'll want to store them into our folder to make it easier to find next time so here we have two different file types you'll see one is called the cut file and one is called a crafter so pretty much if you want just the individual file not already pre-separated to make to make the cuts you can download the crafter version and if you want the ready to cut files you can download the one that just says cut file all right so I'm gonna download the cut file version so I'm gonna hit download here now this is one thing that might happen too does anyone ever try to download an SVG and over here you can see how it has the Corel draw icon does it ever pop up with like uh, maybe like a Internet Explorer icon or you try to open this file and it opens up in a web browser instead of like Corel or your Silhouette or um, your Cricut? And if it does, do we know how to fix this? So, okay, so a lot of 
A lot of yes, it does it, and no, we don't know how to fix it. Okay, so when I hit download here, you'll see the download pop pop up or pop down at the bottom here. So this little arrow key next to it, if we left click on that, it'll say open, open with system viewer, always open file of this type, or show in folder. So in this case, we want to go to show in folder. All right, so this is going to show us our folder right here. So in, now again, mine already has the Corel file on it, but what you're going to want to do next is when you find that file, right click it. And if you go almost halfway up, you'll see one that says open with. And depending on what programs you have installed, it's probably going to either be this Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge. It's probably going to be one of these two. All right. So what we want to do is select choose another app. All right. So, excuse me. Right now, this one says Corel Draw 2017. Keep using this. But again, if yours says like Internet or Microsoft Edge or even another program that you don't want it to, scroll down. You might have to hit more apps. Find Corel Draw or your Silhouette or Cricut, whatever program we want to open this into. So let's say, let's pretend like I'm selecting Corel Draw, and then I'm going to select always use this app to open SVG files. You're going to click OK. It'll probably open up that file right into your Corel Draw now. And next time, if you go back to your downloads, all your SVG files should switch out to this little Corel Draw icon now. And then from there on out, it should keep opening up with your Corel Draw. Um, I had some the other day that had pineapples instead of the CDR symbol. So yeah, with that, I'm not sure what program would have pineapples, but it was probably trying to open up into, you know, a separate program. All right, so even though we just downloaded that in, that design now and we have it in our Corel Draw program, let's say I make I cut this design, I close this out without saving it, and a week from now I want to go back to get this design because I never saved it anywhere else, I would either have to go back to my, you know, the Rhinestone World website, re-download it, or I'd have to go to my downloads and hopefully find it in my downloads from previous, you know, the previous week. Now, if you don't download a lot of things, it might be a lot easier to find, but, you know, like me, I'm on the computer a lot. I'm constantly downloading new things or, you know, stuff like that where it's going to get lost pretty quickly. All right, so at this point, we have pretty much two options um, one we can resave this as a CDR file in just as a Corel draw file if that's the case what it's also gonna do for us is show us a little preview of our design so here Here you'll see that it doesn't actually preview a design, it just gives us a little icon of Corel Draw. Where if we get into actual Corel Draw files, you'll get to see a preview of the image. So if that's if that's what you want to see, I would recommend resaving this as a CDR file. If you can remember by just the name of what it looks like, you can take your file that you've already downloaded and move it into a new folder where you've create where you're storing all your individual designs all right and that that folder is up to you where you want to drop that or create that so if you want it under your documents if you want it on your desktop if you have like a 
hard drive, like a portable hard drive that you might want to store things on. Um, any place like that, maybe a Dropbox where you, you know, can access it from anywhere. Any place like that, you'll want to create your own folder for your designs. So in this case, let's just say we'll create it under our documents. Now I already created TRW live templates. I have another one that I've created in the past for other examples, TRW templates, but instead, you know, what I could do is let's, I'm just going to pretend like this is all my downloads where it says live templates. So we're going to go into this folder here and I already have my wedding live template mini pack saved here. So what I can do now is create another folder and I can call this one just, you know, individual downloads or designs, or I can go right into a certain theme. So with this one here, we have our focus on the positive. So I can, you know, name this one, you know, positive designs. I could put, you know, it under flowers. I could put it under inspirational, whatever helps me like think of this design. I can store it under. So I'm going to rename this one and let's just, or let's just call it motivational. All right. So I just created that folder there. So now let's go here. I'm going to resave this as a CDR file. So I'll show you the difference. Um, we had a question too. Suppose, Suppose I'd like the option to use the design with silhouette. Would I have to re-download it and save it in another folder? So no, you wouldn't have to re-download it. Now with the silhouette, um, the silhouette, you have to have either the designer edition or business edition to open up SVG files. So without any of those upgrades, you won't be able to open up an SVG. But if you have business or if you have the business edition, you can open up CDR files in that too. So it's just kind of like up to you of how you're kind of going. If you're using silhouette just as the cutter, or if you're using silhouette as your main design base, like let's say you don't have the wizard in Corel Draw right now, you're just using silhouette. Um, you'd want to keep everything in it just as an SVG, most likely. Um, And then if you want, you know, if you're just cutting in the silhouette, then you can just pretty much, you know, you can save as a CDR and when you're ready, you can export as a SVG and then just open the, you know, cut ready file. So it's up to you and it depends, you know, on what programs you have, but I would always, um, you know, I would probably just save it as a cut ready file when I'm ready or just save each version. So like if I wanted this for this, silhouette i'd probably get rid of this part here and just save my cut files and just put like uh focus on the positive ready to cut perfect all right so here let's save this as a new cdr file so at this point i'm just going to go to file save as we'll go to our documents i'm going to find that folder trw live templates again you can name this folder anything so it can just be designs, design folder, you know, whatever helps you. And then under motivational, I'm going to just keep it the same name, focus on the positive. All right. So now we have CDR. I'm going to hit save. And then if I wanted to, I could have this and just save it, save as. Like, let's say I was done with this and now I wanted to save it as a SVG. I could drop that down and I could put ready to cut. And I would just hit save. All right. So we're going to save as curves and just hit OK. So now I have two different file types ready. If I'm going, if I need to send that to the silhouette at any point, I now can. But if I ever want to go back to this file, let's say I want to, you know, I always want the original version. Maybe I want to eventually change it to a one color or two, you know, switch the 
maybe add colors, take some away, anything like that, I'm gonna keep the original file too. So if I go to TRW, or if I go to my documents now, TRW Live Templates Motivational. So now we have two different file types, right? You'll see this one here, Corel Draw 2017, and this one here, SVG. All right, so this is what the difference from saving it does too as a Corel Draw file compared to an SVG. If I right click, go to view now, and extra large icons, see here how I get a preview of my design? The SVG file, you won't. Now, kind of what we talked about at the beginning, there is supposed to be an extension that we can now add through Google to preview SVG files the same way. So hopefully um, we can get that all figured out and we'll be able to preview the SVG files too. But if not, you can always save as a CDR and that will allow you to preview your item beforehand. All right, so any questions about saving individual files? Do we understand, is there any questions about like, do we understand individual versus mini pack versus fonts? Any questions on any of that? Um, we have a question, if we save, if we make any changes and save it, um, will it like alter the original or will we still have the original? So if you save over like this design here, I have the focus on the positive. Let's say I made it a one color instead of a two. If I ever wanted that original back, I could just go back to the website, redownload the original and, you know, get it back to normal that way. All right. All right. So no questions. Perfect. All right. So now we're going to get into setting up your live template files. So the live templates um, have a bunch of mini packs. I need to go back and install the fonts. Thanks for no problem. Now, remember with those mini packs, you only have to install the fonts if you're not installing the Windows version. If you install the Windows version, it automatically installs all the fonts that are a part of it. But if for some reason you're getting like a you know that error where you don't have a font, um, that's just you know there's either if it if you did the Windows there's an error on our part. If it's just an individual design, it could be um, it should have already been like converted to Cur, so it shouldn't have that issue. So if you see that on this specific design or anything you can always let us know too and uh, we can always go back and fix that All right. so let's go back or right, let's just kind of start I'm gonna get rid of my live template editor there just so we can kind of start from the beginning all right so I've just opened up my design wizard up top right you'll see the little window that has a D in it that's our docker window when I left click, the first option you'll see is your TRW Live Template Editor. All right. So this, well, once I have this open, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. So this is where we're going to access all of our live templates, where we're going to edit our text, and also get our designs cut ready. So this Live Template Editor is going to do a lot for us. If you scroll down, you can see all the uh, tools at the bottom too. But the first thing we always want to do is set our folders. Now, one of the big things too is until you install a mini pack, you're probably not going to see these folders because it, it, they're not just automatically going to be created. It's going to create them with your first mini pack or full live template pack you install. Okay, so if you haven't installed any of those yet, and you're trying to follow along and you don't see them that's why but the first mini pack you install or full live template pack you install it will create those folders and then you can go back and make sure the folders are set correctly all right so on this on the right hand side you'll see open template change artwork add artwork import and my artwork all right so the top one 
with the live template packs, you're going to get templates and clip art associated with um, each pack. Now, not every pack has clip art associated with it. Most of them do. Um, probably about 80% of them do. Um, but they'll be separated into their own folders. All right. So open template will give us our template and that change and add artwork will allow us to switch out the clip art associated in those templates. Okay. So these folders next to them, these are where, this is where our path is going to open up like whatever folder we tell it to. So if I wanted just to open up my documents, I could click on my documents, hit OK. And every time I hit open template, it's just going to go right to our, my documents. Now, I don't want to do that because none of my live templates are installing to my documents. They're all going to install to a specific folder. So if we scroll down here, you're going to see the C drive. And it's probably already going to be open. So you'll see how this arrow is pointing down. So we're going to just scroll down until we see the folder users. And again, most of these should already be open to the correct folder layout. But this is where it gets, you know, tricky where if you don't watch any of the tutorials to start out with, it's almost going to be impossible to like set this folder. Okay. So we're going to go to users, public, public documents. And under this, you might see a folder called clip art or templates. Skip those and you'll want to find the folder that says the rhinestone world. All right. So once you get here, then you'll see your TRW templates folder. And you just want to click on that. Now, if you click on the arrow, it'll drop down and it'll show you all your folders that are all your packs that you have installed. So again, you won't see this unless you have a pack already installed. So this is the part you, you really won't be able to set these folders correctly until you add a mini or full pack of the live templates. All right, so you just wanna select TRW templates and you wanna make sure under folder here that it just says TRW templates here, all right? So don't click on an individual template because then every time you open it, it's gonna go directly to that template rather than list all of our available templates. All right, so TRW templates, okay. Now when I come over to open template, it will list every pack that I've have installed. So obviously you can see how many we, we have quite a few on the site, um, but all of them will be eventually be listed under here and separated by each pack. All right, so at that point, if I want to open a certain folder, so let's say our TRW Live Templates Volume 3, I click into that folder and it's going to show you all your TRW templates. Now some of them, or most of them, will come with, let's see if I go to a newer one because I think I already deleted it on that one. Um, let's say Multi-Sport 3. Okay, so when you click into it, you'll see two different folders. One that says CDR and one says SVG. Most of the time you won't ever use, especially if you're using the live template editor, you're not going to use these SVG folders. So if you want, you can delete that out. So you know only to go right into your CDR folders. All right. And if you, if you want to go a step further, you can actually move all these out. So the minute you click into it, you don't even have to click the CDR. It just goes right into it, but it's not, you know, it's just one extra click, click. So it's not, not a big deal. All right. So here it's going to show you our list, all the files that are part of this pack. All right. So you can see we have the Corel draw icon on the left hand side, but what's cool about the live templates and saving them as Corel draw files is now I can come up top here where it says change your view. And if I go to the drop down, I can scoot this up to extra large icons and it's going to show me a preview of all the designs so I can, you know, make sure I'm picking the right one. If you use the SVG files again, it's not going to be able to show you a preview. 
So it's going to be hard to remember what Sports Live Tempo 23A looks like. So again, that's how we're going to set our folders like that. Um, under TRW templates, you set up a new folder, but you want to delete that folder name and have all those files to be templated. If I delete that folder name, will the files be deleted or default to the template folder? So let me see. Um, so if I'm not sure if I'm understanding this right, if you create a new folder in here, which you can, you can, you know, we've gone through a lot, but you can actually create your own live templates as well and save them in here. So if you ever create like a new folder in here and you actually have files into it, so I'll just call this one TRW um, custom folder. If I create this folder here, if I add stuff to it, if I delete this folder without moving the files out of it, it would get rid of all those files that I have in it, especially if I'm creating myself. Now, if I come up to the pack that I just did, the TRW Live Templates Volume 3, if I delete this whole folder, you know, an accident or purpose, if I want to get those files back, I can, um, I can go back to the original download, just re reinstall it and get those back. But if there's ever one that you've created from scratch or anything, that you definitely want to be careful about deleting that folder out. Now you can right click and rename any of these though. So um, renaming won't hurt anything, but if you delete these out, the only way to, you know, if it's a folder or file or pack that we've created, it's not that big of a deal. Just go re-download it. It'll add it back. But if you, um, you know, if you've created your own custom templates and somehow you delete those out, you're not going to get those, those back without recreating all, all of them. All right. And one thing you can do too is you can see right now that I have here Valentine's two, three, pretty much up till, I think this is actually one here. So we have seven Valentine's Day mini packs right now. So if I didn't, if I wanted to, I could move all of, okay, yeah. So someone said, if you accidentally delete something, you go to your trash and select restore file. So yeah, you could possibly save it that way wasn't thinking about it that but yeah you could probably go back to your recycle and uh restore the file that way can tr if it's close to you might be able to do an undo i don't know sometimes that works with folders um but yeah we just want to be careful with that but you can always combine these folders too so what i recommend doing is does everyone see this path that we're in up top here so this PC, C drive, users, public, public documents, the Rhinestone world, and then TRW live templates, or TRW templates. This is, this is the file path to get to your templates. So what I always recommend doing, one, it's just hard to remember this path. And if I wanna access my templates, just to access them without going to like this open template folder here. I don't want to have to go each time or try to remember this PC, C drive, users, public, public documents, the Rhinestone World TRW templates just to get to these, right? So if you actually look on my left hand side here under quick access, I actually already have one that says TRW templates and TRW clip art CDR. So if you left click and drag this TRW templates over to this left hand side, you'll when you hover over it, you'll see pin to quick access. I always re recommend doing this. So just let go once you see uh, pin to quick access. Excuse me. Now I already have done that, so I don't need to do it again. But by doing this, now if I'm just over here in my folder and I want to go to my TRW template or my templates folder to 
maybe edit something or save to it all I have to do is now is just click TRW templates and it's that same spot but now I can access them a lot quicker so in the future if we're saving any live templates or adding anything into your, here that's custom this is how we can access it really quickly without having to remember this path every time now after a few it's kind of you know if you if you've ever done it the hard way after a few times you kind of remember the path it's not like crazy hard but you know if you're only doing it once a month or something like that it's you know you don't want to, have to watch a video every time to go back and realize oh yeah it's under users not windows or something like that all right so this is how we can access them and then again once we're in here like all my multi sports if I wanted to I could go to my CDR of each one I could select all copy and then I could go to my pack three paste them in here copy all and then select everything copy that now and at the end I can move all of my multi-sport mini packs into one pack so instead of having you know 11 different multi-sport mini packs I can have them stored all into one folder so it's you know quicker to access all of them than just trying to go into each one individually so you can always like once you have these folders installed you can go in and change them around however you want uh, we have a question where um, where on the left hand side did you drag your templates to so you should have this it might be closed but like on this on your PC side our Windows computer you should have this quick access area and if you drop it down you're just gonna left click and hold where it says TRW templates and then you want to hover into this area until it says pin to quick access yeah so once you have it pinned over here on the left hand side you can just click TRW templates and it will go right there for you yeah and then to to kind of add more templates so here you'll see cute food like mini pack one through eight again you can just kind of go into one like this go to your CDR folder you're just gonna hit if you hit control a that selects everything so you'll see how everything's highlighted right click copy or shortcut for that is control C and then I would just go into the next cute food pack select that one hit control V or right click and hit paste that will now drop all everything that I had copied and then I'm just going to repeat this process so I control C or right click and copy and you would just go through all your cute food packs until you had them all in one and let's say with my uh, once I'm done with all my packs I could then rename this one to cute food live template packs and once I was done now I've only added two to this one so I don't want to delete all my cute foods if I had them all but at this point I could go in here and I'm just gonna hit the delete key on six and on two because I've already now added them to this one here so instead you know now most of the time with the mini packs we already have them as a full pack um, so like the cute food packs we already have that as a full pack but you know if you've only purchased one or two or three of them instead of the entire pack you can combine them just like we did here call it cute food packs now on this one it still says eight so you would have to come in here and change this one this name too if you wanted um, just to say you know match it where it says packs but now they're all stored into one folder so you don't have to kind of go through and be like okay you know this one has this in it this one has that but I'm looking for 
you know, the steak one, but I don't know what mini pack that's in. Well, now they're all in one pack, so it's a lot easier to find. All right, so you can do that with all different packs. So if like you wanted to combine all your sports packs together, you could do that. Um, if you wanted to combine all your, you know, animal packs, you could do that. Uh, so this, you know, once you once you download it, you can go in and edit any of these um, as you want. Yeah. Now, and someone said lots of mini packs because they're released first. Yeah, that's the only thing is. As we have the mini packs, we release them before the full. So that's why a lot of us will have, you know, multiple mini packs instead of the full. So, hey, if there's five mini packs and that's a full pack, you can easily, you know, just now add them all together in one. So you don't have to go through each one to find a specific design you're looking for. So any questions on setting up our templates, knowing where to access the files, how to set our folder using the icon here? All right, perfect. So now, same thing we just did, we're, we're gonna do with our artwork packs too. All right, so under the artwork, there's, a, there's four different folders. All right, now the four different folders, two of them we wanna set up to at least our TRW templates, our, our mini packs, our clip art associated with our mini packs. So the top two, the change in ad artwork, I would recommend setting those up to match your TRW templates. So or your TRW clip art. So on change artwork, you'll left click. You're gonna follow that same path we just did. So C drive, users, public, public documents. Now again, you'll see clip art here. We don't wanna use this folder. We wanna go to the rhinestone world folder first then you'll see trw clip art and then actually if you scroll down you'll see one that says trw clip art cdr so it's a little it's like one extra step with this one but we want to make sure we go to the trw clip art cdr all right so we're going to hit okay once we do that and now when we hit change artwork now it wants to have something to change it with so i'm just going to draw a circle once we hit change artwork now, same thing, users, public, public documents, the Rhinestone World, TRW Clip Art, and TRW Clip Art CDR. All right, so what I would recommend again is left clicking where it says TRW Clip Art CDR, left click and drag, and then pin to quick access. Because now you can access your clip art and your um, templates very quickly just by clicking on these individual folders over here. Right. Now, same with add artwork. We want to set that folder up the same way. So we're just going to keep scrolling down so you see the TRW clip art and then TRW clip art CDR, hit OK. And now add artwork will be associated with that same pack. Right. So now if you ever want to save any, like if you create your own clip art, or you um, purchase clip art from anywhere else and you want to add it into your TRW clip art section, you can do that here. All right, so as you install the packs, the clip art associated with them will automatically drop into these, these folders. Um, can you change the path of my new computer has dual drives and I have a C drive set for a uh, set for operating systems only. So the where these drop, you won't be able to switch or change the path for those. Uh, once they're in here, you can copy and paste those to anywhere you want. And you can set this folder to open up to anywhere. So 
what you might have to do with that, it might just be an extra step, but let's say you, you know, as once you add them, you can set this folder to anywhere you want. So you can, instead of linking up to your TRW clip art, if you move manually move all these files somewhere else, you can then set that to open from there. But otherwise for the main, for the first path, it's always going to follow that main one that it's already set up to. But once it's there, you can copy all those files, create a new, you know, folder anywhere on your computer, under your desktops, under, you know, any drive you want, and then access them that way. Now the two folders underneath where you have import in my artwork, those are essentially the same thing. Another word for add artwork, but it can be, you know, from any source you want. Um, not and and that pretty much, you know, if you, if you've purchased from other companies or you've created your own artwork or clip art, anything like that, you might have them stored somewhere else. They might have their own file system like we do where it automatically puts them in certain folders. You can select the folder icon here and link to those folders or anywhere you want on your computer. Now what I personally would do is try to have, whether it's from us, another company, something I created, I like to have them stored all in the same area. So I would probably, for, you know, since we're working out of here and I would move everything to my TRW clip art folder, even if it wasn't from TRW, um, unless you just want to know the difference of where it's coming from. But I just like to have it kind of all in one. So all my clip art, I would try to move into one folder and then set it to that. But if you have any other you know, folders stored anywhere that Marty have a big collection and you don't want to move them around, you can set import in my artwork to anywhere on your computer or any file or, you know, anything like that. And it will access from there. Um, is it better to save individually to have the name for each? Um, so when you say save what, like if you're, if you have a clip art, you'll want to save each one separately. Um, if that's, yeah. So if, if you have a clip art, let's say something like a collection of football players, like silhouettes of football players. If you'd want to separate and save each one individual. So you might have a QB, you might have a running back, you might have a wide receiver, a lineman, you know, all, you know, any defensive position might be hard to know what they're actually playing. Um, well, if the ball's not in their hand, but if you have all these different clip arts, you want to save them individually because when you switch them out with a design, so let's say for example, um, let's see if we have like a decal one we can use real quick. All right. So if I have like a design like this, if I don't save if I want to switch this from a baseball to a football design, I can come in here now and hit change artwork. And let's say I had a football clip art pack. If I don't save them as individual designs ahead of time, then it would actually try to grab all my football clip art and switch them in. So you'll see here, they're all like individual. So if I select this one, it will only switch it out with that clip art. But if you had everyone saved on the same page, it would try to fit in, you know, the quarterback, the wide receiver, and then I'd have to go in, delete, resize it. So it's a lot more, it's a little bit more work up front saving individually, but at the end, it makes it a lot easier. All right, so that's kind of the basics of setting up the different file types. So we went through fonts, we went through individual designs, and we went through setting up our live template editor files. And again, too, when you have these files in the live template editor, 
when we created this folder on the left hand side now that says TRW templates for the most part some aren't that we've added in here um, but most of these are going to be live templates so those what we mean by live templates is we can come in here and change the text and we can change the clip art out so I don't want to get in the habit if I'm creating like my own design from scratch that isn't a live template let's say like it's outsourced for um, a company or a school I don't want to save my files to my TRW templates folder these are these are more set up for live templates that will go in and edit when I had the file under my t documents where we did the TRW live templates this is where I want to like in our save files specific for certain companies or programs or schools anything like that so obviously this says baseball it's a football player it, that doesn't really matter right now but let's just say I want to save this individual design as a ready to cut file so let's say I change this we'll change this to Lakewood 20 say 2020 and football okay so this file right now is specific for Lakewood 2020 football so I don't want to save this as a live template because this is pretty much ready to go for my Lakewood football decals so I would go to file save as my TRW live template folder under documents so you know it's right there and again any folder that you access a lot you can always pull down and click pin to quick access so if there's a you know a certain area on your computer where you save like your more ready to cut files you can always pin it to the quick access just so it's right there for you all right but here I would probably make a file that said let's say this one's for schools so I would do schools make it generic first and then I could get into we call this one Lakewood Ranch High School so I can leave it there or since I know this one's for football I want to make a new folder that says football and then I'm gonna make one that says Lakewood football QB decal or decal underscore QB and then I would hit save all right so this is more like a specific file that's ready to go that way I don't have to next time they want this decal one it's already saved so I can pull it right up and two I don't have to go back to open D open template switch out the football player switch out the word football it's already done um so we had a couple questions come in with that um can you do that with a live templates folder too yeah yeah so pin to quick access yeah definitely pin your your live templates to quick access it makes it really easy to access them that way if you're not using the open template um and what does the underscore do for you it doesn't it's just like uh, when when you're saving like designs and stuff you don't have I didn't have to put underscore QB I just did like I could have just put QB there um, it really didn't do much except like have a space kind of in between it for some reason like when we save some of our files we've just got in the habit of doing like underscore so that's just like something personal I do it's not a um, trick or anything like that it's just uh, a way I've I've saved some of the files so next next file if I save like if I had this I could replace it I could come up here to change artwork I could type in football hit search and every football I have or anything labeled football would show up here and then this one I could you know change it to my running back and I could just go file save as and instead of QB I would just change this to RB 
So it's just my way of saving it, but that that underscore, I could just leave it like without it too, and it's it's the same thing. It's just something I personally do, and then just hit save. So no, those are just kind of ready to go with everything like that. So like if on our we have like a storefront, you know, on their folders that when they're saving for all their customers, it's you know, it goes by school, it goes by businesses, it, and then in each one, it might, you know, go to the individual school, and then the individual sport, and so on. So it's, we try to make it just as easy to access as possible, and that way, if they come back, and they say, hey, you guys made us this design, you don't have to try to fumble looking through all these, you know, old folders and stuff like that. Hopefully, it's stored a lot, you know, neater cleaner just so it's okay lakewood ranch no problem let's go to your folder you said you were working with football all right so we have this qb decal this running back decal we have this shirt made um you know and then you, you can go from there so just a way to save it because you don't want to especially once you get files like more cut ready you don't want to save those to your live templates because those you won't be able to go back and change around. Um, we had a question about when we save artwork, um, like when we pull artwork from a CDR design, how do we tag that? So if I had this like football player here and I just wanted to save this, like may, let's say I, you know, I, I found this clip art from another design. I want to save it to a folder or um, add it to maybe an existing clip art folder I already have. I can go to File, Save As. And let's say, you know, I want to save it to my TRW clip art folder. So I'm going to select TRW clip art here. So I could try to go to like something that's more football related. So I have my football live template mini pack one and two. So I could go to this one. We have our different football players in here. So I could name this one just to like keep up with the, the name. I could call it football player 12. And down here, you can add a tag. So I could add tag football. I could name it running back so I can keep adding ta as many tags as I want here so next time if I'm searching for this I can be really generic I could type football player 12 I can type running back I can type football and no matter what this design would pull up and then of course you would just hit save here but you can add as many tags as you want in this area now, because this already has the under the file name football and player and 12, if I were to search football, player, or, of course, the number 12, which would be really random, if this would pull up. But now, if it, didn't have, if it just had the word player 12 in it, even if I search football or running back, this would show up. So you can always add tags to anything just to kind of you know, help it pull up in different, um, you know, searches and stuff like that. So I could add sport or sports, you know, something like that. If I want to get really generic, um, I could put silhouette under there, but we want to, you know, we want to try to use tags that are close to what we're, you know, saving. But I could just hit save there. And now that saved it under my clip art. Um, yeah, so when we're, so when we're, um, saving at least clip art, anything we're saving to our live template folders, we always want to save as CDR files. If we're saving ready to cut files, you can save it as like any, I would either save it as a CDR or the file you need to cut. So if like you're using a cricket or a silhouette, you might have to save it as a SVG. That's when I would save it. But if you're adding anything to your, 
you know your clip art or your template folder you'll want to save as a CDR that way you will make sure you get the preview of the design you can still switch out SVG clip art or any type of vectorized clip art with the change or add artwork button it's just you don't get the preview beforehand so that's the only difference so if, if you have all these um, you know SVG files or clip art you can go in and resave them as a SV or CDR file to get the preview or if you know what they look like you can still you know change them out with any clip art it's just you won't get when you click like add artwork if I hit view here you won't see any preview you would just have pretty much where it said football player one two and have to kind of guess or remember which one was which uh, I downloaded a pack and was missing the CDR file in the mini pack do you know what mini pack that was then we had another one can you show us can you show us how to pull up a live template from the docker under quick access um, so are you talking about like open template here or another way to open up? Yeah. So if once you're here, once you go to your TRW templates, if like, let's say, let's go back to that TRW live template three, you would hit view extra large. And then, you know, once you found the design you wanted to edit. So let's say it was this thunder design right here. You just double click. And this is what's cool about using the live template editor instead of file open. Because right now you'll see the name of this file is TRW Live Templates Volume 3 Magic Cut 07A, right? So when I double click this, it's going to open up a new file for me, but it's going to be called Untitled 2. The reason we do this now is because if I hit find text, I go through here and change anything around that I want. If I go to file save now, it's not going to ever save over that design we just opened. So this under untitled two now, if I go to file save, it's going to want to, you know, have me name it to something and tell me what folder I want to save it as. If you go to file open and you go to your TRW templates from here if you do the same thing but don't use the live template editor so right now you'll see same file see how it has the file name now right here for us All right, thanks, Karen. I'll uh, I'll edit that beard and mustache pack. All right. So that's the difference from opening up from the open template. So anytime you're used, you want to edit a live template. I always recommend using this open template tab instead of file open because now, if I were to make any changes to this design or convert, like right now, this text. You can come in and where it says thunder you can change it to any like team name anything i want but if i were to weld lacrosse and seminoles together and then save this design right now this would actually convert it from not being a live template anymore because now if i hit find text see all my seminoles and lacrosse doesn't show up here that's because it's been welded and isn't a text anymore. So if I were to do this in this design where I went to open template, if I accidentally save this, it's no problem because I can still go right back to my open template, open the same file, and it's right back to the way it was. But if you go to file open here and open up your live templates, it will actually open that specific file. And then if you were to save over it, because I made changes, I'm going to exit out it's going to say it's going to ask me save changes to this file if this pops up just hit no because we don't want to we don't want to save the changes because we could have we could mess up the file for further use all right 
So in this case, if I made any change to this, let's say, you know, again, if I made this a Seminoles lacrosse and I welded this together, all is one color now. If I wanted to save this, I would then go to File, Save As. I don't want to save it to my TRW Live templates because, one, it's not a live template anymore, and two, it's probably a specific file for Seminoles Lacrosse. So that's when I want, would want to go back to my documents, or if I, you know, save, if I did a quick pin to that, that's when I would go to my TRW Live templates, schools, this one would be Southeast High School, Lacrosse, and so on, just like we dis just did. Um, can you show us the steps to save a blank mask to the mock-up creator? Um, Karen, with that, I don't know if we'll have time for that today. I don't have, I'd have to find a mask and stuff. Um, but that's definitely something we can cover next week. But we have, and we also have, if you check any of our YouTube videos on the mock-up creator, we have a lot of free ones. It's, it's a very similar process. So, um, today I don't think I'll be able to, but, um, I can definitely... And someone said, I think Matt just did that on the live. Do you know if that was Thursdays or Mondays? Okay, he did. So yeah, if you check out yesterday's live, it should already be up on the site. Uh, he can kind of like walk, you can see it through that way too. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely cover that. In the, we'll get in the mock-up creator next week. Um, today, we're just going to, we have a couple other things we still have to cover. All right, so any other questions? Uh, I did the first series bundle. Uh, so next week's training is going to be very similar to training series four. Um, so if you down, if you already watched four or have it purchased, it'll be probably the most similar to that. Uh, we'll definitely hit some other little things that you know might be a little bit different, um, but in comparison, it's probably closest to the training series four we did last already um, quick access on Windows 8 don't see it um, that I'd have to Charlene if you want to give us our give us a call at our call center um, I don't have Windows 8 I don't I think I'm on like 10 or something like that so I'd have to um, check on that but if you give us just uh, shoot us an email we probably have a tech that can um, figure that out for you and I don't know if you want to upgrade to the newest windows but they can they could help you with that too if you wanted to all right so any other questions on setting up our live template folders um, downloading individuals saving anything like that All right, so I think we'll get into the fonts next, and then we'll probably wrap up with that just today. Um, so, have have you guys purchased or downloaded? You should already have some installed with the software. No matter what, you'll get a, a couple or a few of them. Um, but have you purchased any individual fonts on the website yet? Mostly Rhinestone. Uh, we had a question too uh, about Wednesday's class is posted up on YouTube already, so you can just go. You can go directly to YouTube. It's a when they're free like that. Um, although any free class will just go right to YouTube. It will be updated on the back end too for the recorded link, but you can go to YouTube and it'll be one of the newer videos there. This one will be posted um, for the weekend. Um, okay, so we have mostly stadium. So have we downloaded any rhinestone or 
looked at any rhinestone fonts yet. The vector fonts are a little bit easier. We don't have as many rules with the rhinestone fonts or the vector fonts. It's more the rhinestone ones that we'll get into today and kind of go over those. Those are the a little more confusing than the vector fonts of setting those up and uh, kind of understanding what we're looking for when we purchase something from the site. Okay, so one thing uh, with the vector font and I know this is a beginner, so I just want to ask, does everyone know what I'm saying, like a vector font compared to a rhinestone font? So most of us, yes, but we have a couple no. So the, the biggest thing, like a, a vector font is kind of like you see here with just your basic impact, um, a, or, you know, just like a basic aerial font, anything like that. If I type in the word Seminoles. I can, with the vector font, you can resize this however you want. I can pull it up, I can pull it down, I can pull it to the side. I can resize this however I want, and it's pretty much good to go. I can cut it at whatever size I want. When we get into rhinestone fonts, those are, those have a little, those have rules, and we have certain ways of setting them up and they can't really be changed to different sizes so like this seminoles text if i wanted this five or six inches i could just come up here hit six bam it's done with the rhinestone font air we can't necessarily adjust to make it you know exactly six inches for every font or anything like that we have to resize it and when we resize it to a certain stone size so in this case we have our ss10 selected Whatever it resizes to, that's that's our size for that font. So I can't make it larger or smaller unless I switch to a smaller or bigger stone size. All right, so let's let's uh, retype this out. So I'm going to type out the word Seminoles, and here up top on our wizard, these two arrows. This is going to be our font window. So under Find Font, I'm going to type T R W. All right. So here we have our TRW6 RF and TRW6 SF. So when I click on them, one thing we'll notice right away is under font preview, see how this is starting? You can't see the whole word, but it's supposed to say lower. We have the, it kind of more says low. And if you look over here, my font where I had the word Seminoles is gone, right? So some of our older fonts are set up this way. So this is where it gets a little bit confusing. In order to type this font, I have to type it all in lowercase. So if I retype this, even though it's an all uppercase font, in order to see it, I have to type lowercase. All right, so now, if I switch to this TRW12 rounded, same thing, lower. Um, okay, so this Western one, this has an upper and lower case, right? So here I can type in all upper, I can type in lower, I can type in title case, and it'll have characters for each one. So it's really important when we're using rhinestone fonts to pay attention to this font preview, because if you type a word out and all of a sudden it disappears on us, so right now, this one's only, I have to type in lowercase. Again, it's an all uppercase font, but I have to type lowercase to be able to see it. And if you look here, the S is gone in Seminoles. So if I switch it all to lowercase, then you'll be able to view it all. All right, so that's kind of the first rule with our fonts. Now the second thing is, whenever we type a rhinestone font out, like we did here, I can grab it from the side, my vector font, I can make the height lower, I can you know, drag it eat any way I want, I can pull from the corner, pull from the sides to resize it. With rhinestone fonts, you always, to resize, have to pull it from the corners. So when I resize this, even though I'm resizing it, that doesn't mean when I'm done resizing it that this is ready to cut in rhinestones. When I'm resizing like this, it's pretty much just to see it a little bit bigger. But when we resize a rhinestone font, we have to come up top 
our stone size is going to be in our drop down here. And then this button underneath, when I hover over it, it will say resize. We're going to left click. It's going to say not all stones are 0.135. Would you like to replace? We're going to hit yes. And now this is the size of my font in SS10 stones. So the word Seminoles in this TRW24 font is 15 inches wide. So unless this is going on like a back of a game day or something like that. I don't, I probably can't use this on, you know, most t-shirts. All right, so that's where the big thing with um, rhinestone fonts we have to pay attention to. So if I wanted this for a generic t-shirt, this TRW24 is probably too big for this, this design. So the only way I can probably use this font for the word Seminoles is I'd have to come up top here drop this to sixes, hit resize, and now this font is the word Seminoles. It's in SS6 stones now, so it's not in tens, is closer to 11 inches wide. So that I could probably get on, you know, a large to a large shirt or anything bigger than that. That would work okay. Um, so that's the only way with rhinestone fonts to switch the size, overall size of our design. So when we're looking on our site, if I go to designs, fonts, and let's say I go to rhinestone fonts here. If I scroll down, you'll see some different fonts listed here. So if I click this quick view here, this is how we're going to get an idea of what we can type with this font. So the word vroom in this font, this classic cartoon, one, it's going to be 1.8 inches tall. And the word vroom is going to be 11.7 inches wide. So if we count the characters, one, two, three, four, five, and then an exclamation mark, that pretty much six characters is almost 12 inches wide. So if I have to write the word, if I'm looking for a font to have the word Seminoles, yeah, sorry, and this is based in SS10 sizing. So all the images you see are in SS10. That's our generic font size. Um, so all the images you see are based on SS10 sizing. So if I look at this font here, and I need the word Seminoles to go across my shirt, this font is probably going to be way too big to have the word Seminoles. It's going to be almost like 20 inches wide. So this font probably won't work for what I'm doing. So I need to kind of go through, and now you'll see different ones, though, like the classic cartoon. This one's 2.4 inches tall. This one's 1 1.2. So the word Magical in that font is only 9.1 inches and that's seven characters so we have different sizings for some of the fonts not every font has different sizing points to it but this one here 1.2, 1.8, 2.4. So when you look through, you know, anytime you're purchasing a font, just those are the little things we want to pay attention to. Um, because, you know, unfortunately, it's not like a vector font where I can just literally purchase any font, size it to the exact size I want, and then be done with it. The rhinestone fonts, that's kind of some of the rules we have to look for. So if you kind of look up top here, If I go back to fonts here, um, we have the breakdown of the sizing. So less than one inch, one, one to 1.5, 1 1.6 to 2, 2.1 to 3. So a good rule is usually the taller the font, 
the wider it gets. So if you go to a three or more than three inches tall font, you're probably only going to fit, you know, realistically four to five characters at most to get to that like 10 to 12 inch area. Where less than a one inch font, like this one right here, this island time, the word skimboarding is only 7.2 inches wide. So that's where you can find different fonts to kind of fit different designs and stuff like that. Uh, we had a question, is there a font that is a good versatile stone font? Um, we do have a couple, they're more script fonts that you can actually resize um, and then apply stones to it. It's not, but it's only like kind of a script, so it's not like a basic font. With that, it's, you know, if there's ever a certain size or look you're going for, you can always like shoot us an email. We can give you some examples that way. But it's kind of just looking through the different ones, finding a style that you might like, um, and then a size, and go from there. Um, but those are the big things with the rhinestone fonts that we want to always kind of look out for. Um, but you'll kind of, you, you should have some ones that are pre-installed or installed with the wizard and play with those first. And then, you know, always, if there's any question about it, just send us an email, give us a call and we'll walk you through, you know, what would work best for you. That way you don't, you know, the fonts, some of them are, you know, inexpensive. Some can run a little bit. So like on, a, you know, you'll see these ones range from 14 to 18 bucks. So they're not necessarily, you know, super cheap. So you don't want to just grab one and not be able to use it. Uh, yeah, and they all are on sale now through the month of May. They're all 65% off. So now is a great time to purchase fonts or any design for that matter. But, um, you know, don't, they're not something you just want to buy just to buy or, you know, just ran some you could just because you could be like, oh, I can definitely use this font. This is a clear, nice, like smaller font. I'll definitely use something like that. That's a good thing. But, you know, some that might just look cool um, might actually not serve a good, like might not actually help you much because you might find one that's, you know, something like this catapult one. Well, I really like the style of it, but now looking at it, eight characters is almost 14 inches wide so i might not ever i might not be able to use this much you know stuff like that but yeah it never hurts just to you know give us a, shoot us an email ask us stuff like that um the ones that are resizable now they're all kind of resizable in the fact that i can go from sixes to tens to sixteens and it will resize it but you want to, you know, most of the time we want to be working with tens. They're the easiest to work with. Um, the sixes sometimes to brush those in can be a little bit more of a hassle. So that's why we always kind of start with tens. But, you know, going larger is a little bit easier to work with. But going down the sixes, that's when you, you, you're going to spend a little bit more time brushing those in. Uh, so we had a question, what happens if you stretch it from the side rather than the corner? So with that, what's going to happen is so, and trust me, this is one of the biggest mistakes we'll make when it comes to uh, fonts like this, rhinestone fonts. So I, I sized it out. It's really small. I can't see it. So I'm going to grab it from the side here, grab it from the side here so I can kind of make it legible, right? Now, if I go to hit resize, Let's say even go to tens, hit resize. It doesn't pop up the window that says, do you want to resize all the tens first of all? Second, it doesn't actually resize it. It just makes these, instead of reading as a font, it kind of just converts it to curves. So if you zoom in now, you'll see how none of these stones are actually perfect circles. And if I try to grab it into individual stone, they're all group or they're not group but it's like one object so once you hit the resize button if you can't individually grab these stones like here I can click on any stone and if I zoom in you'll see up top here they're perfect circles 
But if you can't indiv individually grab each one of these stones, something was wrong. So here, if I click on this stone here, it selects my whole object. So those are some like good signs that, you know, I probably stretched this the wrong way or I did something wrong. If you go to resize and it selects the entire design. Uh, I purchased rhinestone pack HCV fonts one and two. Are those problematic purchase? Like, um, Karen, those shouldn't have any issues with them. Like, were you getting a problem installing or anything? Or I know, I know the font pack one is one of our most popular. Um, so I don't think there's any issue. Shouldn't be any issues with them. Um, but if there are, just let me know and, you know, we'll, we'll make sure to fix those. All right, guys. Well, that's a probably a good place to stop today. Um, yeah, those those font packs are great to get started with because it gives you a nice variety of different sizes and everything like that. Um, but yeah, just if you inst once you install them, if you have any issues, just uh, just let us know. We'll make sure everything's set up correctly. All right, guys. But thank you so much. If there's any additional questions, give us a call at 941-755-1696. Shoot us an email at info at the rhinestoneworld.com. Just a heads up, our call center and shipping will be off Monday. We will still be going um, live Monday, me and Matt. So you guys have a great, safe weekend. Hopefully you can get out of the house a little bit. Um, also... For anyone that was on the live yesterday or that wasn't, we have our under feature supplies. One of the packs Matt went over yesterday was this rhinestone decal live template pack. So these are decals that you can actually uh, add text around and we made it like a live text or you can just use the decal itself, uh, the rhinestone decals. So that's $100 off the original price of $275 for $175 today. And that's going to change. Matt's going to change that at like 4 o'clock Eastern time today. So about an hour, just over an hour, this is going to go back up to $275. So you'll still get the 65% off this. So I think it's like comes out to like $60 bucks or something like that. So that's available for the next hour. Also, anyone that's new under Feature Design Today Giveaway, those have been updated already today. So we have our May Bunny, and we also have a Son of a Beach design that's up for the next uh, 24 hours. So we'll switch those out again over the weekend. Um, so if you haven't got your free design yet, go get those today. Um, those are the two that are listed right now. And then we'll update you know, throughout the weekend. Those will change. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Again, have a great weekend. And I'll see you guys Monday.